wanted to be closer with you, but uh, they told me to come up here. So, before uh, we begin, I will ask if you don't mind if we have another word of prayer. Our precious Father in heaven, we come and bend the knee, requesting that you be our guest of honor and that the Holy Spirit may speak and your man servant may be quiet. Lord, move in our hearts for salvation. I commend everyone here present that you leave a, a footprint in everybody's life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, today, the title of this presentation is The Individuality of the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit an individual? In other words, is he a person? That is uh, my purpose to, to search the scriptures for. Is the, is the Holy Spirit as much a person as the Father or Jesus? Yes. Okay. The answer is yes. The, the main scripture, or the opening scripture, is found in Matthew 28, 19. And it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So, on this test we understand that there is a name for every one of the Holy Trio. Now, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. In Acts 5, 3, and 4, Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, it tells us that he is God. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? To whom do Ananias and Sapphira lie to? To the Holy Ghost. And to keep back part of the price of the land, in verse four, last part, thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So the Holy Spirit is God is a divine person. He also is one person of the Godhead in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Apostle Paul is saying goodbye to the Corinthians in his last letter, and he blessed them with these words, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you. Amen. He understood the presence of the Holy Trio. And that's how he blessed them. Now, Peter also understood this as he wrote uh, in, in, in the beginning of his letter on 1 Peter 1 to 2. He says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. What a beautiful way that he says, Hello, hi. In Matthew 28, 19, which I had read, uh, they all take a name. And we, we, have, we have already studied the name, but I'm going to mention one, uh, Jehovah, Elohim. I, I had read already in Deuteronomy 6, 4, when it says, Hear of Israel. The Lord thy God is one Lord. So the, the word God there is Elohim, which is plural, and the Lord and the word Lord is Jehovah. So Jehovah Elohim. So Jehovah is the name. The Holy Spirit is eternal. Hebrews 9:14. How much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, 
who through the eternal spirit offered himself through spot to God. So Jesus offered himself through whom? And what qualified the spirit? It's eternal. It says the, through the eternal spirit. So he is eternal. Now he's also omnipresent. When the psalmist in Psalm 139 verse 7 to 10 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Here the psalmist identified the right hand of God as the Spirit of God. He is also omniscient. It means that he knows everything. 1 Corinthians 2, 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So who knows everything about God? The Holy Spirit. He is also omnipotent, means that he has all power. Isaiah 48, verse 13. My hand, and we already found out that the hand of God is the Holy Spirit, also had laid the foundations of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. I, can, I call unto them, they stand up together. So, which of the person of the, of, of the Godhead uh, was in charge of putting all the worlds together? The Holy Spirit. Now, we know that Jesus is a creator, but the Holy Spirit cooperates with him. So they both participate, and they want to do the will of the Father, which is the, the ones who uh, give the idea. In, in Ezekiel 8, 1 and 3, we have found the meaning of the hand. And it says in verse 1, that the hand of the Lord God fell upon me. And in verse 3, and he put forth a form of an hand and took me by the locks of my head, and the Spirit lifted lifted me up between the earth and the heavens and brought me into the vision of God to Jerusalem. So the Holy Spirit is also a co-creator, cooperating with the Father and Jesus. In Job 23, 4, this is the words of Elijah. The Spirit of God had made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Who gave life to him? The breath of God. Do you know any other place in the Bible that the breath of God is mentioned? In creation, when God breathed the breath of life upon, uh, upon uh, the man, and he became a living soul. So this breath of life starts life and sustains life and of every single breathing creature. In Genesis 1.26, and God, which means the three of them, Elohim, said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, and man became a living soul. In Isaiah 48.13, it, it, it also mentions, Mine hand also had laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. Now, he also sustained the, main, the, the life of men, as I, I repeat it. Uh, in Job 27, 3 and 4, some, some people may uh, question uh, Job 23, 4, because it's Elijah, and Elijah wasn't a nice person to Job. And so, let's hear from Job himself. And Job, uh, as recorded in Job uh, 27, verse 3 to 4, it says, 
All the while my breath is in me, that's the word of Job, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. That's it. Can, can we say that's the breath of God? That's what he breathed on, his, on the nostrils of men. Number four, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Genesis 2, 7 is where we had uh, when uh, the, and I'm going to read it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and bred into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now the Holy Spirit has power of his own. In Romans 15, 13, it reads, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that ye may, ab may be abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is not only power, he has power on, on himself. In Romans 15, 19, through many signs and wonders by the power of the Holy, Holy by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and around about into Illyricus, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. It's by the power of Jesus, uh, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that I'm standing here in front of you. In John 15, 5, uh, he does a, a very wonderful work on us. He reproduces the character of God. He says, I am the vine, this is the word of Jesus, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much, what? Fruit. So if we abide in Jesus, we are going to produce fruit. Now, he produces the fruits, Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Let me, let me make a pause right here. How many fruits of the Spirit do you see here? How many of you say one? Nobody says one? <laughs> okay, let, let, me, let me show you. It says here, but the fruit, is it singular or plural? Singular. Of the spirit is. What is, is, is the verb here in singular or plural? Singular. So, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Who is love? God. So all we need to have is the fullness of God's character. Now, now it really expands what is love, right? It says joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Why is it that there is against such there is no law? What does it mean? Is there any law that condemns you if you have the character of God? Absolutely not. So the law has no business with you. You are under grace, you are not under the law because you are not under condemnation. Okay. Now, he also sanctifies the offering. Romans 15, 16, it says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by whom? By the Holy Ghost. Now, who sanctified the offering of Solomon as he, as he offered to the gods? Second uh, uh, Corinthians 7, 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burning offering, the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Do you know any other occasion in which the disciples received tongues of fire? The Holy Spirit. So as they were sanctified, so the Lord sanctified the offering of Solomon with fire. Now, this is probably something new to you as it was to me. In 1 Timothy 3.16 it says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Now, we're talking about mystery. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Did Jesus need to be justified in the spirit? 
Justify from what? What did Jesus become sin for you and I? Did he have to become a perfect sacrifice? It wasn't until become accepted a, a perfect sacrifice through sufferings that he was accepted. And it was the mediation of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit has not raised Jesus Christ from the tomb, the Holy Spirit could have not sanctioned the perfect sacrifice. So he, he says, God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believe on, and the world receive up in glory. Hebrews 9.14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit suffered himself with us part to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So, in other words, Jesus offers his blood through whom? Through the eternal spirit, he offers himself. The Holy Spirit mediated between him and God. Not on the divinity, but in his humanity. Because he took your human nature and my human nature. As you remember in, in, in Hebrews 2.16, it says that he didn't... Um, uh, let me read exactly from the Bible without paraphrasing. Hebrews 2.16 And it reads in the following matter. Hebrews 2, 16. And it says, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Was the seed of Abraham sinful or not sinful? Sinful. sinful. That's why... He needed to be justified in that flesh that he took because he was made sin for us and he died on the flesh. God the Father had an issue with the human race. There was a separation and Jesus took the nature that was separated from the Father. And, and it was a big risk that he took. He could have, he could have get stuck and humanity are never raised from the tomb. But it was through the Holy Spirit that he was justified. The Holy Spirit gives visions, Ezekiel 8, 3. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my head. And the Spirit lift me, lifted me up between the earth and the heavens. And brought me into the visions of God to Jerusalem. Now, very interestingly, the Holy Spirit also transports, transports people from place to place. Do you, do you remember anybody that was transported by the Holy Spirit? You say, Philip? Absolutely. Anybody else? Uh, somebody else was transported by the Holy Spirit? What, what, who, who, who else? Well, Elijah was transported to heaven. Uh, but, uh, okay, let me read that. Ezekiel was taken by the, by the lock of his hair, right? And, and lifted up between the earth and the heavens. What about Simon? Simon in Luke 2, 25 and 27 says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. It was the spirit that brought him to the temple to see Jesus' dedication. Now, what about Jesus? Was Jesus transported by the spirit? Let's read it. It says in Matthew 4, 1, Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It was the spirit who took him. It, it, it was a quite a distance, so he didn't walk that distance. He was taken by the Holy Spirit. And in Luke 4, 14, it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. 
another time that he was transported. And now you mention Philip, and it's on the book of Acts 8, 39 and, uh, verse 39 and, and 40. And when they were come up into the waters, the Spirit of the Lord cut away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing, but Philip was found in Asotus, and praising through the preachings in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Boy, if the Holy Spirit takes me and put me in Willington, oh, I'll be praising the Lord all the way. Man, that's amazing. By the way, you know, you know that this is going to happen again to the 144,000? You read the book of Joel. The book of Joel, you read especially chapter 2. Because they, they are men one they're at. And they will leap from hill to hill. They will climb walls. They sneak through windows like a thief. Nothing will stop them. If, if you are consecrated and you, and you get to be a servant of God among the 144,000, the Lord may say, uh, Brother, I want you today in Beijing, China. And boom, you're in China. And you speak Chinese. It, it's that easy. <laughs> yeah. And you know, if they walk, they said that they walk in, um, and they don't break ranks and they don't trust each other. If they fall upon a weapon, uh, a sword, it won't hurt them. So it's strive to be among the 144,000. Okay, he is a, a member of the Godhead. In Isaiah 48, 16, it says, Come ye near unto me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was there. I am. And now the Lord God and his spirit hath sent me. Somebody told me that you cannot find the, the holy trio in the Old Testament. Well, you can quote Isaiah 48, 16. Now, Apostle Paul uh, when he say goodbye and bless the Corinthians in Second Corinthians, he mentions the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. You should mark that text in your Bible so you don't lose them anymore. It's in the last chapter of Second Corinthians, the last, the last letter of the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 14. Now, has the spirit, um, does the Spirit of God have attributes of an individual person? Let's look what the Bible has to say, because some people say that he is a force, he is a nebulous thing that floats in the air and nobody has seen him. By the way, you have seen it. When you read Ezekiel, we had read Ezekiel 8, verse 2, it described him like with the loins down, it's like a fire, and the loins up, like a color of amber, and he, and he put a, a form of a hand and lift Ezekiel up. And he says, and the spirit lifting him up, identifying that person. And uh, this afternoon, you're going to see the person of the, of the Holy Spirit again. I, I was asked, would you shake hands with the Holy Spirit when you get to heaven? Absolutely, yes. It, but I wouldn't dare because it's, it's, it's too much honor for me. <laughs> but it will. And um, so he has a name. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says he has a name. Uh, Romans 8, 27. Oh, by the way, uh, we establish his name uh, when you read uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear of Israel... The Lord thy God is, is one Lord. So, here of Israel, Jehovah Elohim is one Jehovah. And we know that's plural, and he is one of the three. So that's his name, Jehovah. All three takes the name of Jehovah. Uh, we know that the Holy Spirit has a mind of his own. In Romans 8, 27 reads, And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. Who searched the heart that knows what is in the mind of the Spirit? The Father. When, when we pray, our prayers are taken by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ to the Father. He, 
he he says that he groans uh, it not not an, an a whisper voice but a loud voice and uh, while he does that the the god the father reads the mind of the holy spirit yeah uh yeah i'm sorry uh, can can we can brother can can you uh, wait for the question so I don't lose my train of thought? Well, is that okay? Okay, let me. Okay, yeah. I, with 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 your permission, I'm, I'm gonna continue and I I'm gonna answer all the questions at the end. Okay. Uh, okay. The. Um, Romans 8, 27, and he that searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So God's will is that the Holy Spirit make an intercession for you and I, presenting our prayers into the heavenly court. Of course, those prayers are not taken if they, if they don't go with the name of Jesus Christ, and we are covered with his blood. Now, is, is the Holy Spirit addressed as a person when, when John, the, John the disciples call him a he? He never call him an it, an, 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 a nebulous thing or a stone or, or a rock. It says in John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, who is he talking about? The Comforter. Even the Spirit of Truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. In John 16, verse 8, it says, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And 1613, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father had are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. You, you think that Apostle John understood that is a he? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now he also. I'm 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 sorry, but. Uh, uh, I okay, let me. Uh, at this point, at this point, I think that I have to invite you to a uh, word of prayer. If you can kneel with me, please. Our loving Father in heaven, uh, you are so gracious to us. We have invited you to be in our midst, Lord, and we want your, your protection, protection from any, any forces. And, uh, and Lord, be kind to our flesh. And Lord, in your hands we commend ourselves for your honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Uh, that's, that's why he is not Jesus. First Peter 3.18, For Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh. That's, that's why he took our hu human nature, so he can taste death. But quickened by whom? By the Spirit. Uh, there, are, there, there is another text that says that God resurrected him, the Father. But God is the one who gives the orders. And the Holy Spirit and Jesus only please the will of the Father at all times. That's how that works. In John 14, 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he is also a teacher. 
he associates and fellowships. Uh, only a person can associate and fellowships. And it says here in, in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. So he communed with us. He fellowships. Now, does he have feelings? Only a person has feelings. It says in Ephesians 4, 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. He also loves. Romans 15, 30, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers, to God for me. He also can be saddened. He can be vexed or irritated or displeased. Isaiah 63 10. But they revealed and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. He also, he also chooses ministers of God. He can choose you, he can choose me. Acts 13.2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the words wherein to I have called you. Call him. He also speaks. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Have you ever heard the voice of the Holy Spirit? You should. Every one of you. Every one of you. I, I remember once I... I, I had in a, a heated discussion, uh, I never raised my voice. I wouldn't say never. I, it's not my nature. But I found myself raising my voice, defending self. And I hear a voice in my head says, Harold, it's not you. And I, immediately I said, Lord, please, please, please rebuke the flesh, rebuke the devil. Yeah. He talked to you, he talked to me. And by the way, uh, in the, yes. Okay. 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 Yes. So, uh, you, if you pray, Lord, teach me what should I do today. Here are my plans. Where should I go? Do you know that we should pray before we go grocery shopping? Because we're supposed to be in the company of Jesus, right? The co company of God. Uh, you know, I start praying <laughs> because I preach and I preach to myself. So I said, I gotta pray before I go shopping. And I go to the grocery shop and I said, oh, custard, oh, oh no, no, I cannot take it, Lord, sorry. <laughs> or, or I go to the ice cream, oh, oh, thank you, Lord, for reminding me not to take that. You see, if you pray, then, then you start doing God's things. He's doing his works. Okay, he, he has a voice, and Hebrews 3, 7 says, uh, Apostle Paul says, Wherefore the Holy Ghost said today, said, Today if ye will hear his voice. So he has a voice. In um, verse 8, Harden not your heart as in the provocation and the days of temptation in the wilderness. He also teaches in 1 Corinthians 2.13, Which think also we speak, not in the word, words which man's wisdom teacheth, but with the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Would you dare to open the scripture without prayer? Has, have you ever opened the scripture without prayer? I have. And I tell you this. You can do an experiment and it's, it, it always comes true. Open the scripture. Read a, a chapter. No prayer. Write down what you understood. Okay? Then a few hours later or next day you come. And say, Lord, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kneel. You teach me the same chapter. You open the chapter, read it, and write down what you understood. And it will be completely different all the time. I guarantee 100% of the time. Yes. Now, um, uh, I, had to, I had to make a disclaimer. You, you pray and say, Lord, teach me. But before that, ask forgiveness of all your, your sins because... The, uh, uh, David says, if I harbor wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. <laughs> so, yeah. be right with the Lord first. Okay. 
Uh, he reveals, Act 10, 19, while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. So he reveals. He hears and reveals things to come. John 16, 13, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Uh, notice this here. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into how much truth? Oh. How is it that we had different concepts on different areas of the Bible and, and we dispute the church? What went wrong? It's because we not all had the spirit. So, if, if, we, if, if we confess our sins, and we make sure that we, we are being washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, if we make sure that we are covered with the robe of his righteousness, then we can ask so the Holy Spirit will come unto us, and he will guide us from uh, spiritual things being spiritually discerned. It's not that you discern. It's the Holy Spirit that do the discernment for you. Then we come in the unity of the mind of Christ. If we all have the mind of Christ, nobody will contradict each other. It's a, it's a simple. So it says here, um, and he witnessed. And he says in Hebrews 10, 15 to 18, Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. What what is he a witness of? He come and talk to us about something that he witnessed. Where did he witness? Because he reads the mind of God. And he witnessed what is his will and his message for us. And, and he, the witness, come to us and witness to us. That's how he witnessed to us. For after that he had said, this is... The covenant that I will make with them after those days, say the Lord, I will put my last into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Who writes the, who writes the last of God in our minds? Now, to write something needs a hand. Who is the right hand of God? Who is the, who is the finger of God? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit is a distinct person from Jesus. Some people say, oh, no, that's, that's the spirit of Jesus. But we're going to see. Matthew 3, 16. It says, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up a straight, a straight way out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lining upon him. So is Jesus the dove? No. no. It, it, absolutely not. Okay. Uh, you can see that on, on, on Mark 1.10, Luke 3.22, and John 1.32. Now, uh, it says that he raised Jesus from the dead, 1 Peter 3.18. For Christ also has once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now, if he, if, if he was Jesus, he wouldn't receive anything from Jesus because he was Jesus. But listen what John the apostle says in John 16, 13 and 14, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show, it and, uh, uh, he will show you things to come. Verse 14, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. The Holy Spirit has to wait and receive before he come and show it unto you. So if he's going to receive something from Jesus, it's not Jesus himself. It's the Holy Spirit. Now, he is another comforter. So we have two comforters in the Bible. John 14, 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, Jesus' prayer, and he shall give you another comforter. In other words, he, I, he will commission another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Uh, remember that uh, when, when Jesus says, I will be with you all the way, it's, it's because 
the Holy Spirit doesn't speak of himself. He speaks of Jesus and the Father. That's how we have Jesus. How do we have the Father? How do we know about the Father? Because Jesus spoke about the Father. And, and, no, and he never spoke of himself. That's in, uh, in John 14, 10. Okay. Uh, John 15, 26. Uh, it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. So who sent the Holy Spirit? Jesus, from the Father. Even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now, in Matthew 12, verse 32, uh, makes a difference between the blasphemy against Jesus and the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And he says, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. How is that? If I reject the Holy Spirit's call, who else is going to uh, convince me of sin, righteousness, and judgment? I'm on my own. And on my own, can I, can I look for God? No, the flesh is enemy. It's, it has enmity against God. That's how I lost it all. So we have to be very careful and um, listening to the calls of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2.33, he says, therefore being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having, res oh, okay, therefore being by the right hand of God, exalted. Who exalted Jesus? The right hand of God. And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed for this which ye now see and hear. Now, the Holy Spirit intermediates between the Father and Jesus. That, that was when he was in the flesh and this walking on this earth. And this is, um, uh, we, we have found in Hebrews 9, 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself. It was through the Holy Spirit that he offered himself. He couldn't offer himself by himself. That's what it's saying. So it was the Holy Spirit that, that sanctified that offering. Without, it says, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So in other words, Jesus couldn't have purged our, our conscience if he had not offered himself through the Holy Spirit. And, and first uh, Timothy 3.16, he says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. This is a tremendous mystery. And, 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 and the Lord expressed it in this word. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believe it on in the world, receive up in glory. So, if he was justified in the spirit, it means that after he took the nature of sin and he was made sin for us, and, and took the nature that was separated from God the Father. The Father read the mind of the Holy Spirit and said that Jesus was perfect, sacrificed, and justified him. So now we have access to the throne of God. There is a bridge. Now we can access the Father back again through Jesus Christ. That's, that, that access is, is symbolized in the ladder that uh, Jacob dreamed. And it's the same ladder that Jesus explained in, in Luke um, 1, uh, uh, I think it's, it's John 1, 53 or 54, when he talked to, Nick, to Nathaniel, you know. And you will see angels of heaven ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So that ladder is Jesus Christ. And every step, every step is the character of God in that ladder. You read... Whenever you have a chance, um, uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 5 to 10, and you'll see the steps of the ladder that connect us back to God. Okay. Um, the Holy Spirit is a distinct person from the Father. In Romans 8, 6, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray 
for as we are, but the Spirit itself makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit is between us and God. It's, it's not God, otherwise he wouldn't intercede for us. So 1 Corinthians 2.10. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So the Holy Spirit reads the mind of the Father and gets his will and witness to bring it to us. John 16, 13. How be it when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. So, of whom the Holy Spirit speaks? The Father and the Son. So, it couldn't be the Father. In Romans 8, 27, it says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So, he has his mind of the mind of his own mind. Now, uh, now, I'm going to show you the other names of, for the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul, in the book of Hebrews, wrote something very interesting. And he identifies the Holy Spirit as him who uttered these words. And this is what he says in Hebrews. Uh, you, you'll see on your left-hand side in the, in the box. He says, Hebrews 3, 7 to 9. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said... Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and the days of temptation in the wilderness, when your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. But he was quoting from Psalms 95, verses 6 to 10. Let's see how David identified who is speaking here. And he says, O come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pastures and the sheep of his hand so he David is identifying Jehovah Elohim speaking here and he says today if you will hear his voice harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the days of temptation and the wilderness when your fathers tempted me proved me and saw my work 40 years long was I grieved with this generation line upon line, precept upon precept. We identify the Holy Spirit that spoke and, and the Old Testament identify as Jehovah, Elohim. So when Jehovah, the three of them, speaks, the, the spokesman is the Holy Spirit. Now, he is also called Adonai. In Acts 20, 28, uh, verses 25 and 26. And this is the word of Paul. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah. So he is saying that the Holy Ghost is spoke by the mouth of Isaiah. And this is what he is quoting. He says, that it says, saying, Go unto these people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. Now he was quoting from Isaiah, and I went and looked for that quote, and it is found in Isaiah 6 8 to 9. And he says, Also I hear the voice of the Lord saying, and the word Lord here is Adonai. Paul identified the Holy Spirit. And Isaiah identify, uh, identify him as Adonai, saying, Whom shall I send, and whom shall we go for us? Then said I, Here I am, here, here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now he's also addressed as the Most High. In the book of Acts, it says, Ye stiff naked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, do ye always resist the Holy resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. In Psalms 70, 78, 17 says, 
and they sinned yet more against him, provoking the Most High in the wilderness. So they resist the Holy Spirit. They, they provoke the Most High in the wilderness. And now, uh, I put here as Melchizedek, but that's going to be my next topic this afternoon. So I'm going to jump. And, uh, uh, and in conclusion, this is the conclusion. And this is the conclusion, I should have put conclusion of facts, because they are factual. Number one, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. Number two, the Holy Spirit is one person of the Godhead. Number three, the Holy Spirit has the attributes of an individual person. Number four, the Holy Spirit is a distinct person from Jesus Christ. Number five, the Holy Spirit is a distinct person from the Father. Number six, the Holy Spirit has a name. What is his name? Jehovah, Adonai, the Most High. And we're going to see you next, Melchizedek. May the Lord bless you today. And, and may the Lord has left a footprint on you today. Yeah, I, I think we have a few minutes for questions. Okay, I'll, I'll take a few questions if you, if you have any. Or would you like to have it later on this afternoon? Okay, I'm, I'm going to invite you to kneel with me as we look for the presence of God. Most loving Father in heaven, uh, we bow to you to, to thank you. Lord, you don't know how much we appreciate you for making so clear to us that no winds of doctrines may come and sweep us. Lord, make sure that we had confessed all our sins, we, we are repented, we had walked away from them, and that the old man is dead, and that the new, new man, Jesus Christ, lives in us, that the Holy Spirit can guide us into all truth and protect us in these perilous times. Bless everyone here present, and our relatives and friends and the churches that we represent. I ask this humbly in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that promise that everything that we ask in his name, you will do it to us. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.